in the molecule. Now coming back to transmittance, transmittance is basically the exact opposite of absorbance. What is being absorbed is not being transmitted and what is not being absorbed is being transmitted into the, de the detector. So you can see that the transmittance is going up, is increasing up the scale. Now this makes a lot of sense. We have a peak at a very low transmittance over here because it shows that this wavelength was absorbed to a great extent. Now if, if, if it was absorbed to a very great extent, uh, it has been um, if it has not been transmitted much. So this means that the transmittance is very low, which means very less of this wavelength has reached the detector because most of it was absorbed by the bonds in the molecule. So this is what transmittance is. It is the exact opposite of wavelengths. So there are two types of infrared spectra. You, one is uh, transmittance, uh, which looks like this. Uh, transmittance against wave number, I mean. And the other one is absorbance against wave number. Now, absorbance against wave number is exact uh, is nothing but uh, we have uh, the, the, the x axis is the same, which is uh, which, which is wave number. But in the y axis, instead of having transmittance, we have absorbance. Now, absorbance, as you know, is the exact opposite of transmittance. So what you see over here is that down the scale, the absorbance is increasing. And what you saw over here that up the scale, the transmittance was increasing. So this clearly shows that absorbance is the exact opposite of transmittance. So um, if you see this graph, if you see this graph, it shows that, let's say this peak. So it shows that this peak is absorbing close to 95%. Now if it is absorbing close to 95%, the transmittance will be around 5%. So the greater the absorbance, the lower the transmittance, the, the, the lower the absorbance, the greater the transmittance. So that's how it works. Now, let's see how, uh, let's look at these peaks. Now we know what absorbance and transmittance are. Now let's look at these peaks. So this peak, as you can see, this one I'm talking about, this peak you can see it's come, it's, it has a very high absorbance. So peaks that have a very high absorbance are called strong peaks and in the data booklet, they're written as S. And uh, the peaks that have very low absorbance, which is less than 50% absorbance, are called weak peaks and they are labeled as W. Uh, and so this is strong and weak. Now, peaks can be either broad or, ca or they can be narrow. So if you look at the spectrum over here, this peak is, uh, this peak is very narrow, which means it is sharp. So narrow is not the right word to use. Uh, for these peaks, the right word to use is sharp. Well, this peak, as you can see, is very broad. So there are strong and weak peaks. There are sharp and broad peaks. So when you look at the spectrum, you will have to use all these terms, strong, weak, sharp, and broad. So you will have to, so a peak can be strong and sharp. It can be, or it can be strong and broad. So this peak, as you see, is strong and broad. And this peak, as you see, is strong and sharp. Or peaks can be weak and sharp, which is this peak, as you can see over here. Or they can be weak and broad. Now, if there is no example of a peak which is weak and broad, in this case, let's look at the other spectrum. So, yeah, this is kind of broad. So, this, this peak is weak and broad. So, strong and sharp, strong and broad, weak and sharp, weak and broad. These peaks can be anything. So, uh, the, uh, so, you, so you have to describe these peaks using these words. Strong, sharp, weak and broad. Now... Let's, uh, let's move further and now let's start doing questions on infrared spectroscopy. Compound U contains a chiral center and has the same molecular formula as compound P, C5H8O. Okay, so we don't know what compound P is but we know that compound P has a molecular formula of C5H8O which is the same as the molecular formula of compound U. Now, compound U readily decolorizes a sample of bromine water. Now, let's see what this tells us about compound U. This tells us that there has to be at least one carbon-carbon double bond in compound U because if you remember from my playlist on hydrocarbons, carbon-carbon um, double bond, it, uh, it, uh, it always decolorizes bromine water because electrophilic addition of bromine takes place on alkenes. So, there must be at least one carbon-carbon double bond. 
compound u does not show cis trans isomerism okay so this also proves that uh, uh, that it 